Itipon. Oh, how cute. Well, welcome back, DIYers. So this is a tiny little oscilloscope. And you might be wondering what the heck this thing could be useful for. Well, I'm going to tell you here in a few minutes. Take a look at what we have here. We have a little nine volt power port, power off and on button. We have OK, trigger, set div, V div. We're gonna have to figure out what those mean, right? You can change it between AC, DC, and ground. I understand measuring AC and DC, but why would you measure ground? I don't know. Some of you oscilloscope experts tell me in the comments below. And we have a little test port. That's nice and handy. This little guy, you hook on there and it gives you a one kilohertz signal. That way you can make sure this thing is functioning correctly. And it says right here on the probe port, max 50 volts. Now it used to be the oscilloscopes were rather expensive, but this little tiny little pocket guy was under 40 bucks. I mean, if this thing shows us anything, that's gonna be a pretty good value, I think, as far as oscilloscopes go. Comes with some basic leads for you. And it comes with the power supply too. Now one of the things I thought was kind of interesting is that it has to be hooked up to the power supply because there's no battery in here. And I was kind of hoping that maybe I could take this thing apart and figure out how to put a 9 volt battery inside here somewhere. But after seeing how tiny this thing actually is, I <laughs> kind of doubt I'll be able to fit a battery in there. But I did get something that might help. Got a little pack of these 9 volt leads to go with it. I don't have any rechargeable 9 volt batteries right now. They're on their way. So whenever I get them in, I'll probably just Velcro a 9 volt battery to the back of this guy and use this little lead to make this thing portable. But that's a project for another day. Let's check out the instructions. Attention, power supply voltage must not exceed 10 volts. Otherwise may damage the ICs inside. Allowed maximum signal input voltage is 50 volts peak. Oh, it's kind of nice. It explains everything that I just explained to you already. Here's your specifications. Has a bandwidth of 200 kilohertz. Sensitivity of five millivolts. One mega ohm impedance 20 picofarads resolution of 12 bits record length of 124 points time base range of 500 seconds to 10 microseconds i think that's supposed to be micro auto trigger mode which is nice it only consumes 120 milliamps and it only weighs 100 grams not bad on the back side of the instructions here it shows how it's assembled i guess some of these come as a kit but this particular one was already fully assembled which is nice so let's get this thing powered up it's a bnc connector so it twists on just like so and now this power cord is a little bit short I have it plugged into my wall right here plugged in and powered on so when you press one of these buttons you can then adjust with the little dial wheel what it's doing so if we hit the trigger button you see it up here just selected auto and we can switch to a normal, a single, but it's probably better just to always leave it on auto. Then you hit the OK button and it goes back to running. Now this button right here will change the time division. That way you can make sure you fit your whole waveform on the screen. And this button over here adjusts where on the screen it's gonna display the waveform. It basically just raises and lowers your baseline voltage. Now up here at the top of the screen, we have some very good information. We have the maximum voltage, the minimum voltage, average voltage, and voltage RMS. It also shows you the frequency, the duty cycle the frequency is running at, and the cycle. That's some pretty good information of this little guy. Now you might be wondering what the heck you could actually use this thing for troubleshooting things on a car. Well, as you know, all modern cars have lots of different sensors on them. And you can hook up to the sensors on this thing and read the waveform coming out of the sensor. Make sure the sensors are displaying what they should. You make sure the waveforms are what the expected shape is. And you can also make sure it's actually hitting the trigger voltages correctly. Now, I don't really have any sensors that we can test with, but I do have something that we can try out. Now, this is a fuel injector tester. You can hook this guy up to injectors and pulse them to make sure that they're putting out the correct amount of fuel that they're supposed to be or just to test their operation. 
And I'll drop a link for this down in the description below because this is kind of a handy thing to have around and they're not too expensive either. But we can get this guy hooked up. I've got a little bench power supply over here that I can hook up the injector tester to. Now you can see as soon as we turn on the injector tester we get some noise coming in on the oscilloscope. But let's set the mode to continuous. There's number four. And hit pulse. Obviously we need to adjust. So right now it's kind of going off the scale. Oh, here we go. If you hit the voltage button again, you see how it lights up at one volt right here. This is going to be the scale that it's showing. So let's actually turn that up. I don't know, maybe the five volt scale is the best thing to look at on this guy. But as you can see here, it's got the maximum of 10 volts and a minimum of negative 1.25. So since this thing is pulsing at DC, you wouldn't really expect to see much of any negative voltage. But of course, anytime you're doing any sort of waveforms even in dc there's going to be some time where it, it drops below zero and it's kind of cool you can see it's pulsing at a frequency of 34 hertz and it's got a 25 percent duty cycle so yeah that's pretty cool isn't it now another cool thing you can do with this guy is actually test out how clean your power is so a lot of battery chargers and bench top power supplies kind of like this one that have to plug into ac power they don't necessarily convert AC to DC perfectly. Sometimes they have a little bit of a ripple voltage to them. Now I've never taken a look at this thing, so why don't I take a look and see what it is. Wow, look at that. That looks really stable. But let's maybe zoom in. Holy cow, that's zoomed in as far as this go. This scale right now is at 10 microseconds, and there is no ripple on this power supply at all. That's pretty amazing. You know, I've been pretty happy with this uh, TAC Life programmable power supply here. There's some that put out more amps and some that are cheaper, but this little guy is pretty dang awesome. But let me know in the comments down below how useful you think this little guy could be to you. I mean, obviously it's only a single channel. It would help a lot if it was a dual channel. That way you could reference two different sensors and see how they're triggering off each other and whatnot. But with how cheap these things are, you can actually buy two of them, buy three of them, buy four, and just hook them all up together if you want. I think this is both a fun and useful little thing to have. And like I said earlier, there'll be a link for it down in the description below. Well, bye. Thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you aren't already, and give us a thumbs up too. It really helps the channel out. Thanks again.